things is online. How do you think, did that have an effect on your directorial choices for this play? It did, you know what's funny, um, uh, so um, this is uh, Christine, she's our um, uh, uh, director of marketing at Goldie Blocks, who I work with in the, the video team. And um, we just, uh, our CEO just did a presentation at, for the Apple WWDC event, and she did a big um, keynote speech, and actually the video was done, that for this show was done in keynote, and it's in a very similar fashion to the one that I made <laughs> for Tebby for Apple. So that did definitely have a direct influence in terms of like being able to cue things up and, and that kind of thing. But uh, you know, in the broader perspective, um, you know, stuff that, because I'm primarily a filmmaker and, and video producer, and so it's, uh, I do have a theatrical background, but it was a lot of fun to kind of come back to um, the experiential um, kind of um, uh, performance, because um, there is something um, really unique about just uh, being uh, immersed in the performance. It's not like, you know, a, a video is like a carbon copy of something that's, you know, has, is its own kind of craft. And so what's fun about this is that it kind of changes a little bit every night. And, and all of the performances, I, I very, like my directing style is very much to give uh, the performer a lot of agency to kind of embellish. And uh, I feel like our rehearsal process was very collaborative. It was, I've never worked with two casts before. It was my first opera. And apparently it's, it's very common in opera to have two casts because you want to rotate and, and make sure that they press their voices. Um, but it ended up being a lot of fun in rehearsal because um, in situations where there were both casts as we were rehearsing, they could provide feedback or they could see things that they were, the other cast was doing and that they could kind of like steal ideas or, you know, uh, kind of work off of each other. And, um, and it, was, it was very collaborative. So, um, you know, a lot of times um, when I'm doing stuff for camera, um, it's, um, it's very explicit and, um, you know, it's like after we shoot it, then there's a lot of like really intricate editing and it's, it's very, um, you know, I'm kind of a control freak, which you know my, my skill set lends itself to that. But it was fun to kind of it was fun to kind of surrender in, in this situation. So I hope that kind of answered your question as a bit as a roundabout uh, kind of thing. But uh, but yeah, it's interesting to kind of have those two. Uh, and I really appreciated Steve's contribution in terms of his uh, media savviness and social savviness. Uh, we saw some of his work back there with the sleazy wire commercial, and in fact, uh, that was our other cast making cameos in that commercial. So if you come back and see our other cast, you'll see us making the cameos in this. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not only that, but he made the most badass poster I have ever seen for an opera. So if you haven't seen our alternate poster, it's of the producers. There's four of us who are producers, and, uh, and it's us in costume. And I swear to God, when I saw that poster, I said, I, I want to marry that poster. Because it's <laughs> amazing. It is amazing. It's beautiful, and it's cinematic. And it just makes me want to go to that show. And I really hope people will have seen his amazing work. We're so lucky to have him. You know, just to kind of tag on to that, one of the really, one of the coolest things that I think Steve brought to this production was because of his background in film and in social media and really getting marketing done and getting people to come to the show is, you know, the original, the, the seed, the intention of this production, from what I understand, was to make opera more accessible to the general audiences today. And Steve brings a background of work and a body of work that is all about accessibility and all about getting people show so um, you know there's there's younger audiences there's people who come to this show because they love Breaking Bad and they get here and you know I, I remember just a couple nights ago on our opening night there was a young man here who you know I walked through the house and I heard him say well you know what I really like is the music he never would have been here to see an opera done on stage if it hadn't been for all of this push all of this all of this this framework that contributes to people actually making it here to see an opera Yes. Well, speaking of which, in a couple of weeks, my grandsons are coming to the Stanford Jazz Camp, and they're older teens, but I'm absolutely bringing them. This is my first time I've ever come, um, and I loved it, and they're going to enjoy every note and every hilarious um, translation. <laughs> 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 you did that amazing um, rewrite. So um, it's really great. The, opera, the kernel of the idea came from me. I started with this concept that for many reasons I want I love classical era opera and I, it's very healthy for singers of our age group to sing this type of opera and, and those of you who go to operas in this area in smaller companies they tend to do like Puccini, Verdi, uh, bigger honking types of grand opera and so I there's uh, there was a need for sure for a classical era music to come in. So it started with that. It started with me wanting to have opportunities to sing things that were good for my voice, and I wanted to sing with my friends. So I, I found this opera, because I love Haydn, 
and then um, I got I convinced other people to join me, including these people on stage, and um, and we applied for this grant, which Dragon Theater has generously provided us with this venue, which, as you all know, in the Bay Area, it's extremely expensive to do anything, especially to be an artist, and um, the cost of the venue alone would have been impossible for us to make this happen. So we're extremely grateful for the support that Dragon has given us. So they gave us the venue for rehearsal and performance. And um, and in applying for the grant, we were talking together, the four, four of us. So it's myself, Carmelo Gingali, Carmelo Rosado, and Nicole Cooper, who are the producers of the show. And, uh, and we were thinking, like, how can we, it's a simple four-person chamber opera. How can we make this something how can we make it modern? How can we make it something that people will get and relate to that's popular right now? And at first I thought like, you know, maybe like a 1950s soda shop, no, that's still too, it's it's a good idea, but it's not it's not right. And then I thought, we have to do Breaking Bad, like it's perfect. Because, <laughs> because Jesse and Walter, like it worked out perfectly with the apprentice and the boss, you know, type uh, relationship. So, so we started with my idea and then from there, took the Italian libretto. So this opera is rarely, it's not done that often. So we all took the Italian libretto, the four of us translated it word for word into English, into the actual, appropriate, exact English. <laughs> and then from the exact English translation, we worked together, the four of us, to make it written by Yeah, so it was a process, a long process. And, so, and Christine actually uh, added some embellishments of her own. She's up there, like running the super titles like mad, in addition to the lights and the video and like everything. And um, she threw some little uh, jokes of her own in there. And so, um, so it's, it's been, yeah, it's, it's been very collaborative. Yeah. And so I remember uh, when I went home to my boyfriend and told him what I was doing when I was involved in the show. And this guy dragged me into it. So you know, was, uh, that was I was not a part of the original production team, but I got dragged in as a stage manager for the rehearsal process. But I went home and told my boyfriend about the seat of the show. And he's like, oh, so it's like a joke on the actors. And I was like, oh, you know, that's a really nice way to think of it. So I'm up there, and I feel like I'm pulling a prank on the actor whenever I press press the button, and you guys all chuckle at it, and the actors, yeah, they, they know what's going on to some extent, but yeah, during the rehearsal process, I did throw a couple of things, and you know, at the very end of uh, Galetta's song, I don't, I don't know if very many people in this group got it, but I, I threw in a Taylor Swift lyric at the end of the song, yeah. thank you, you got me there, and I was, you know, and shake it off, shake it, shake it off, you know, and the other, you know, there's just a couple of other places where it just, it just feels like a joke, and it's great, and it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. Yeah, and it kind of goes without saying, but we rehearsed it in Italian, and we don't have super titles while we're rehearsing. And um, and I can't like read along and also watch them and direct them. So it was basically like the our task was kind of to make it funny without the super titles. And then once we and then once we added the super titles, it's like this whole other layer of comedy. So yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun to you know once we got the tech rolling and, and that started working. But that's when I knew we had a good show when I was watching the other cast and I was sitting there knowing the opera from like the back of my head and dying not seeing the super titles, and I, I knew people were gonna enjoy it. I hope you did, but <laughs> we, we definitely enjoy it, for sure. Yeah. Oh, question. So how long did it take from the time you had the idea to put this together? A really long time, so. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, I guess I found, I mean, I've known about this opera because there are a couple of arias that I had heard before, but when I, came up with the idea, I originally wanted to say with myself, with Carmelo, our other friend Carmelo and my friend Nicole, because we were friends from another opera, and I wanted to make a show happen where we could all sing a full role. And so I would say that was maybe January 2014. And then we got um, the grant from Dragon uh, last summer, maybe like July or August. So since then, we worked that whole last year, the process of translating the score of actually finding the right score, because as I mentioned, sections of the score are missing, so there are all these different versions that are recreated by musicologists. Um, so we, we landed on the one that we picked, and then translating, and then gathering a cast, and a director, and production crew, and pianists, and, um, and costumer, and buying all these props, and we ran an Indiegogo campaign, because um, Dragon did give us seed money, but this, it, as you know, with, with eight singers, two pianists, um, a director and all this other prop staff we needed additional funding. Um, so we ran an Indiegogo campaign, all that stuff. So it was over a year for sure, a year and a half at least. Yeah, um, I remember when you contacted me last fall, I think we were talking about, and um, I still have the conversation on, um, I, I don't have time to look it up, but she messaged me on, on Facebook Messenger, and, and she's like, hey, 
um, you know, I wanted to wait till after the holidays because, uh, you know, we have this crazy idea and I don't want you to, you know, feel like you're obligated, but, and then it was like this wall of text and like, <laughs> like all about this opera and like Breaking Bad, you know, and I wasn't familiar with the opera and I hadn't even seen Breaking Bad at that point, so I was just kind of like, okay, I need to process this, but it sounds interesting. And, um, and you know, to her credit, she, she was the one who essentially talked me into it because I wasn't sure frankly, if I was qualified to do it. It had been a few years since I directed something for the stage, and um, and I had never done an opera before. I've seen uh, a number of operas, and I've seen Eva perform, and, and we were involved in a production that she did, a, kind of a review of her, her favorite um, arias and, and duets uh, with some other singers, and uh, I, I filmed a little behind-the-scenes uh, featurette in that. And uh, when I was there at rehearsal, um, she asked me for some feedback on a couple of numbers, and I actually ended up kind of directing her a little bit, and so we were like, oh, that, that was fun, we should collaborate on something else. Little did I know, like, less than a month later, like, she, <laughs> she would come not, you know, not get a Facebook message. <laughs> so, um, so it's really interesting to look back on that, and then, like, all of the, everything that's, that's transpired since then, but she, you know, was the one who talked me into it, because, um, you know, she and, and the other producers, you know, felt that, you know, maybe bringing someone who wasn't, um, you know, a, a traditional um, opera director, um, you know, might be able to kind of collaborate. And, it, you know, it was very collaborative. It wasn't, you know, any one person who, you know, was assembling this. So it was, um, and even like the design of the show, like, you know, Christine really helped me with the, the set design. We didn't really have a proper set designer. Carmelo was also a, a contributor on the set design. And so between the three of us, we um, kind of helped create the look of it. And, um, and then, you know, everyone else had various inputs. and. Everything that everybody does on stage, with all of the drugs and all of the like props and everything, was all very much influenced by rehearsal and things that we wanted to have um, to play with, um, you know, on stage. So, um, so yeah, all that to say, it's been a journey, but um, tons of fun. We've got time for one last question. Oh, my question has to do with the players, the actors, singers. What was it like to have text and then to have another subtext that's completely different? from the text, and what was the process like? And it looked like he has more time and so much fun. I mean, certainly, yeah, that's beautiful, but yeah, but I'm curious about your process. Well, for me, it's actually really helpful, especially when, um, if you look at the original Italian, oftentimes we're singing the same words over and over and over again. So when you're singing an aria, like in some of my arias, I repeat the same sentence four times. So at, as an actor, regardless of if you're singing or speaking in English or another language, you need to have a motivation for why you're saying that. So it is tricky sometimes in, in the field of opera to have, you know, you really have to work on your character to have that motivation of why is my character, why is that line or word so important that my character needs to say it again? So having both the literal translation and the super title translation, the modern translation, it actually helped to provide additional motivation for speaking those words again. So for me, it was really, really helpful um, in terms of what I wanted to express for my character. And and I can say, yes, it, this has been a hell of a lot of fun and some of the craziest stuff I've ever done on stage. And I loved every second of it. So it's been a ton of work to get to this point, like so much work to get to this point today. Um, but everything we do on stage has been a complete blast. And I have to say that, um, you know, going into this, I wasn't, like, I knew that everyone could sing, um, but I, I wasn't, I, I had, you know, um, some questions as to, you know, how funny that they could actually be. And I'm delighted, I was so delighted that both casts are so, they have such great comic timing in, in addition to their, um, their vocal abilities. And um, it's a rare combination of skills, it really is, like, to, to be amazing singers, but also to really get the, the comedic rhythms and, um, and to, you know, just all, all of those little timing things, and um, it's a lot of fun. You know, and to some extent as well, as far as the super titles went, yes, the, the producers had all written out something that was like 95% adhered to what they originally wrote, but sometimes actors would discover something in the rehearsal process that was still true to the Italian, but didn't quite match up with what the super title, our modern translation, was going to be. So we just changed it, because the actors had found something really wonderful, and we could just change the words a hell of a lot easier than we could find a way to change the wonderful thing they found into something less wonderful. So they, say, they were not locked with it. I would say also that the Italian by itself is really quite funny and witty. And so we don't really have to, I mean, it's funny and witty in a completely different way, 
but the comedy is there. And so it's really cool to kind of like find the energy with the modern stuff, but the Italian and the wittiness and the, the, the way that the music goes with the words, it's super funny in and of itself. So it's really, it's good in that way too. Yeah, you have to have good source, source material. Right. <laughs> to, to, yeah, it's like getting to mine from two sources for right. our comedy. Exactly. Yeah, and it's so gratifying to hear people laughing at an 18th yes. century opera. It's, it's, it's a dream really come true. It's a dream come true. I mean, it truly is. My, the hashtag I invite you all to share on your social media of choice is opera is cool. And that is my passion, to, to show the world that opera is cool and accessible. And to hear you laughing proves that. So it's, it's really a dream come true. Thank you. Yeah. One more question. Okay. question. One more question. For this production, I mean, offering it to another opera company, taking down the road. Uh, you know anybody? <laughs> <laughs> we would love to do more with this, and we would love to continue. We are a Bayer Fair Opera Collaborative. We're a 501c3 nonprofit now. Um, so we look forward to making more shows happen and to making perhaps this show happen in another space. As I mentioned, and as my fellow artists in the audience know, it is a huge challenge of the financial barrier in, in this area. So um, if another theater is as generous as Dragon has been to offer us a venue, that we would absolutely take them up on that. And I think I would just love to do that. So keep your ears out and please uh, follow us on Facebook or, or you can email me or talk to me afterwards if you know any theaters because we want to continue to bring cool opera to the Bay Area. Now, I will just say as a, as a final ending note, um, we're so, I mean, you, you expressed your gratitude to Dragon Theater, but the space is so perfect for this kind of production because it's a really great, intimate kind of uh, space. And um, certainly all of the operas that I've seen are, are, you know, kind of a distance away on a proscenium stage. And, you know, usually, you know, I get the cheap seats in the balcony and, you know, you've got your opera glasses. And it's a whole different kind of experience that it's, you know, such a small, intimate house. And, um, and we're right here. And I love the configuration of the stage. and. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I hadn't seen a show here before directing this, and so I, I wasn't exactly sure what we were going to be working with. I had seen a diagram, but there's, you know, it's, you never really know until you're in the space, and it's been so great, and the, um, the Dragon staff has been so supportive, and um, it's, uh, it's been a really great process. So thank you all thank so much so for much. coming.